In the dark of a May night in 2009, the seemingly boundless skies above the Atlantic became the chilling stage for one of aviation's most perplexing mysteries. What began as a routine flight for Air France 447 transformed into a harrowing saga of human error, technological failure, and the raw power of nature. Join us as we delve into the heart-stopping moments and untold stories behind the tragic descent of Flight 447. In this gripping documentary, we unravel the enigma surrounding the ill-fated Airbus. A330, weaving together first-hand accounts, expert analysis, and never-before-seen footage to shed light on the events that shattered lives and changed the course of aviation history forever. Strap in for a journey into the skies, where every twist and turn reveals the intricate complexities of flight and the unforgiving reality of the air above. This is the untold story of Air France 447, a tale of tragedy, resilience, and the quest for answers amidst the boundless expanse of the sky. Before the clock struck 1929, Brazilian Standard Time on May 31st, 2009, Rio de Janeiro, Galeão International Airport buzzed with the customary bustle of a routine flight preparation. Amidst the familiar hum of passengers milling about and crew members attending to their duties, Air France 447 stood poised on the tarmac, a beacon of modern aviation ready to embark on its journey. Inside the aircraft, pilots meticulously reviewed flight plans, checked instrumentation, and conducted pre-flight inspections with practice precision. Passengers settled into their seats, anticipation mingling with the excitement of impending travel. Ground crew meticulously fueled the Airbus A330, ensuring its tanks were brimming with the lifeblood of flight. Little did anyone know, within hours, the tranquility of this ordinary departure would be shattered by an unforeseen sequence of events, plunging Flight 447 into the depths of aviation infamy. Rio de Janeiro Galeão International Airport serves as a pivotal link between Brazil and the world, with its route to Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport playing a vital role in global tourism. This connection not only fosters economic ties but also facilitates cultural exchange inviting travelers to explore the rich offerings of both Brazil and France. It serves as a crucial artery for international tourism, fostering mutual understanding and appreciation between these two nations. This plane is a four-year-old Airbus A330-203 with manufacturer serial number 660, registered as FGZCP. Its first flight takes place on the 25th of February, 2005 and it is delivered two months later to the airline on the 18th of April, 2005. At the time of the crash, it is Air France's newest A330. The aircraft is powered by two General Electric CF680E1A three engines with a maximum thrust of 68,530 or 60,400 LBF, 304.8 or 268.7 Cohen. Takeoff slash max continuous giving it a cruise speed range of Mach 0.82, 0 0.86, 470, 493 knots, or 870, 913 kilometers per hour, or 541, 567 miles per hour, at 35,000 feet, 11,000 m of altitude, and a range of 12,500 kilometers, 6,700 nem mile, 7,800 miles. The aircraft undergoes a major overhaul on the 16th of April 2009 and at the time of the accident has accumulated about 18,870 flying hours. The flight had three pilots, Captain Marc Dubois, who had 10,988 flying hours, with 1,700 on the Airbus A330. Relief First Officer David Robert, with 6,547 flying hours, including 4,479 on the A330. And First Officer Pierre Cedric Bonin, with 2,936 flight hours, including 807 on the A330. Among the 12 crew members, 11 were French and one was Brazilian. The aircraft accommodated 216 passengers, three air crew, and nine cabin crew across two service cabins. Among the passengers were 126 men, 82 women, and eight children, including one infant. Predominantly French, Brazilian, or German citizens, the passengers included both business and leisure travelers. 
Notable individuals aboard included Prince Pedro Luis of Orleans, Braganza, third in succession to Brazil's abolished throne, and grandnephew of Grand Duke Jean of Luxembourg, who held dual Brazilian-Belgian citizenship and was returning home to Luxembourg from a family visit in Rio de Janeiro. Other noteworthy passengers included Giambattista Lenzi, a member of the Regional Council of Trentino Alto Adige, Silvio Barbato, composer and former conductor of prestigious symphony orchestras, Octavio Augusto Cheva Antunes, a distinguished professor of chemistry and pharmaceutics, Fatma Seren Nezipoglu, a Turkish classical harpist and academic, Isabella Maria Furtado Kessler, a professor of German studies, and Pablo Dreyfus from Argentina, a campaigner against illegal arms and drugs trade. The aircraft departs from Rio de Janeiro Galeão International Airport on the 31st of May 2009 at 1929 Brazilian Standard Time, 2229 UTC, with a scheduled arrival at Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport at 11.03 Central European Summer Time, 9.03 UTC, the following day. Estimated flight time of 10.34. hours after takeoff, the flight maintains stable cruising altitude at 35,000 feet, gliding smoothly through the vast expanse of the sky. As it traverses into the dead zone of radar coverage, a regular occurrence for flights like Air France 447, a sense of tranquility envelops the cabin. Passengers settle into their seats, lulled by the rhythmic hum of the engines, while the seasoned crew navigates the invisible corridors of the airspace with practiced precision. In this transient void of communication, the aircraft becomes a solitary vessel, drifting amidst the boundless heavens, a testament to the marvels of modern aviation and the serenity found in the midst of the journey. 136 UTC. The aircraft entered the area of bad weather of a tropical storm. While other flights on the same route changed course to avoid the bad weather, the crew on board AF-447 did not do so. Due to the higher than forecasted outside temperature and the aircraft still being heavy due to full fuel, it could not climb higher to avoid the weather impact. Around two o'clock, First Officer David Robert returned to the cockpit and Captain Marc Dubois stood up to give his seat to Robert. However, he still allowed First Officer Bonan to control the flight, even though Bonan had less experience than Robert. 2.02, the captain went to sleep. 2.05, Robert called the flight attendant to inform passengers that the aircraft was about to enter an area of bad weather. Two hours, six minutes, and 50 seconds, the two pilots activated the anti-icing system as they were passing through the bad weather area. Two hours, seven minutes, and zero seconds, Robert noticed that the weather radar system had not been set to the correct mode. After adjusting it, he realized that the aircraft was heading straight into an area of severe turbulence. As the flight clocks two hours and seven minutes into its journey, it encounters the wrath of a looming storm, unleashing torrents of rain and fierce winds upon its path. Within this tempestuous maelstrom, the aircraft plunges into a realm of super-cold water, a perilous adversary capable of distorting the integrity of crucial flight instruments. Among them, the pitot tubes, tasked with measuring airspeed, falter under the assault of freezing liquid, feeding false data into the cockpit. Supercooled water is water that remains in a liquid state below its usual freezing point without turning into ice. This phenomenon occurs under specific conditions, such as very pure water being cooled slowly and without disturbance. It can exist at temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but remain in a liquid state until it comes into contact with a surface or object that provides a nucleation site, triggering the water to freeze rapidly. 
In aviation, supercooled water droplets pose a risk because they can freeze upon impact with an aircraft's surfaces, potentially causing icing issues on critical components like wings, engines, and sensors. The impact of a frozen pitot tube on the cockpit is nothing short of catastrophic. As the pitot tube succumbs to freezing temperatures, it delivers false readings, causing the indicated airspeed to plummet towards zero. In response, the plane's stall alarm blares, triggering a frantic reaction from the pilots who rapidly increase speed to avoid an imminent stall. However, the acceleration propels the aircraft into a realm of super-fast motion, pushing it beyond the threshold of control. In a desperate attempt to regain stability, the pilots reduce speed, but the frozen pitot tube obscures their perception, leading them to inadvertently decrease speed to dangerous levels. Unaware of the impending disaster, the aircraft lurches towards an official stall, the culmination of a chain reaction initiated by the freezing pitot tube.
The final report, released at a press conference on July 5, 2012, concluded that the aircraft crashed following sudden changes in speed, disconnection of the autopilot system, and subsequent incorrect crew reactions, leading the aircraft into an aerodynamic stall. According to the cockpit voice recorder, the captain mentioned that he had only slept for one hour the night before, as he stayed up all night in Rio with his girlfriend, who was also on the flight. He was held responsible for leaving to sleep, leaving the two co-pilots in control while the aircraft was facing bad weather. Following the AF-447 accident, airlines had to change training content, requiring pilots to practice manual flying throughout the entire flight, understand parameters in manual flight mode, and designate who is responsible when the captain is absent. Immediately after the accident, Airbus introduced a series of regulations requiring all pilots to remember specifically stating to turn off the flight director immediately when the speed sensor is faulty. Airbus also sent a technical bulletin to all airlines to warn them not to follow the flight director's guidance in similar cases. In the accident, when the autopilot mode was lost, the pilot should have checked other parameters. Engine thrust, altitude for comparison. But they did not do so. If those pilots had done nothing when the speed sensor failed, the aircraft would have been safe. Instead of following basic flight safety procedures, which is the most fundamental principle when entering the aviation profession, they relied too much on the automatic flight system. 